life, screen entertainment. Here she is, that red-hot star of screen television, ambassador over parties, that number one teenager, Miss Valentine Van Loo. <laughs> But I love you likewise. Of all the men in the world, you are the sweetest, the kindest, the most lovable and adorable. You're right. <laughs> Sweetheart, this is just for you. Mmm. Mm, delicious, tutti fruity. No, not that. This. Hey, she's trying to kiss me like hell. Please help me. Maynard, Maynard, uh, Miss Van Loon, there's some mistake. You bet there is, you big phony. <laughs> Is there anybody in the whole United States except jealous members of the Tuesday Weld fan club who doesn't recognize Valentine Van Loon, Hollywood's teen queen supreme? She's the idol of the younger generation and a fine, uplifting influence on them. When one of her pictures is playing in a neighborhood movie, sometimes an hour goes by without a single hubcap being stolen. So why is this uh, living doll so fascinated by my semi-living friend Maynard G. Krebs? Well, it all started a few days ago when Dad and I were having a quiet, intellectual exchange of ideas and opinions. We regret to announce that the special broadcast of the Valentine Van Loon personal appearance has been canceled. Canceled? Dad, look, something's happened to my loved one. She's sick. It's her dog. Her dog's sick. <laughs> no, her dog is perfectly healthy, but he's lost. No. Yes. <laughs> but wait, I can't believe my eyes. Here's Miss Van Loon herself in person. What a glorious day for local television. Miss Van Loon, we've heard of your great sorrow. Would you honor us with a few words? Dear, dear friends and fans, I would be so very, very overwhelmingly and eternally grateful to the wonderful person who returns my beloved dog, Boo Boo. Boo Boo? With a name like that, he ain't lost. He's hiding. Eternally and overwhelmingly grateful. Hmm. Boo Boo is about three feet high, with a shaggy coat and floppy ears, and a lovable but bewildered expression. You rang? Oh, hi, Maynard and Quiet. We're listening to a description of this lost dog. Oh, I was lost once. I put my description in the newspaper. Maynard. But everybody who read the description said it was impossible. And you'll never believe it, but to this very day, they haven't found me. I believe it, I believe it. Thank you, Miss Van Loon. You're a brave girl and an inspiration to all of us in this, your hour of sadness. Boo-hoo for boo-boo. My poor sweet Valentine. If any of you have any information about the whereabouts of Boo Boo, please contact Miss Valentine Van Loon Sweet at the Palace Hotel, and she'll be eternally grateful. Dad, for the sake of Valentine, I've got to find that dog. Also, Miss Van Loon has announced a reward for the return of the missing Boo Boo. Five hundred dollars. Uh, son, for the sake of Valentine's five hundred bucks, I gotta find that dog. Dan, I had the idea first. This isn't fair. It's sneaky. Yeah, you gotta watch me every minute. Here you are, Boo Boo. Come and get us. No dog can resist this. This is not here for a family of six dogs. And watch the store, son. I'll be back in a flash with the cash. Here, Boo Boo. <laughs> Man, when it comes to money, Dobe, your father sure Don't is... Don't you dare use such language about my father. And you're right, he sure is. Yeah, I'll risk my case. It's Boo Boo. Where, where? There, there. Maynard, where'd you get that dog? What dog? This dog. He's Boo Boo and he belongs to somebody who misses him very much. No, Dobe, he don't belong to nobody. Maynard, he told me. In dog, he speaks it practically perfect. It's his native language. Maynard, far, far and enough. This is Boo Boo. I know who he belongs to and I'm taking him back. No, you ain't. Hey, you ain't. On account of I'm taking him back. It's my duty as an upstanding lawful citizen to take him back to his lawful owner and bless his furry little heart and paws. Citizen Krebs, that's very noble of you, but I'll be glad to do it for you. Nope, my head's made up. But, Maynard, if you take him back, all that overwhelming and eternal gratitude will be wasted and... Come to think of it, Maynard, you're right. You take him back. I sure will. Hey, Doe. All of a sudden, you hit a flip-flop, and that means you're scheming up something mean and rotten. Maynard, I'm not scheming up anything. Now, take the dog back to the Palace Hotel. Right. I'm going to take him right back to the Palace Hotel. 
Oh, Dobe, what's going to happen to me when I get there? Maynard, it's nothing to worry about. I mean, they're not actually going to hang you for dog nap. What a relief. For a minute, I was scared. Dog napping? Oh, Dobe, I didn't nap this dog. I found him. Exactly, Maynard. So the punishment won't be any more than 18 or 20 months on the chain gang. 18 or 20 months? That's almost a year. Oh, help me, Dobe. I don't want to tote that barge and lift that bale. Maynard. Hide me. Invisible me. Maynard. They're going to send me down the river. Maynard, that's up the river and okay. Your tears have touched my heart. I'll help you. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. You're all heart, except for the party of this liver and onions. Maynard, the only thanks I want is a simple expression of eternal and overwhelming gratitude. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'll go downtown and fix everything for you. You wait here and keep the dog well hidden. Okay. Hey, uh, how's this, dog? Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. But wouldn't you be better off hiding in the storeroom? Oh, no, dog. That'd never work. Hey, I mean, if I was hiding in the storeroom, everybody's the dog out here. Yeah, I never thought of that. So I have another idea. Both of you hide in the storeroom. Like, wow, what an idea. Yeah. And some people say you ain't too bright in the head. <laughs> Or a press agent, when are we going to see Miss Van Loon in the flesh? In the flesh? Oh, Miss Van Loon don't make them kind of movies. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> now, I'm afraid that Miss Van Loon is too heartbroken over the loss of poor Boo Boo to speak to anybody now. But while we are waiting for her recovery, Miss Van Loon has generously provided sandwiches for you gentlemen of the press. Now, will you gentlemen representing newspapers with a circulation of less than 20,000, please limit yourself to one sandwich and no cream in your coffee, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss. Ah, how do you do? My name is Pete Pulitzer. I am Miss Van Loon's press representative. Come here, I'll fix you a sandwich. Yeah, my name's Dobie. Ah, and what newspaper are you in? No, I'm not with any Ah, oh, you're with a new syndicate, huh? Uh, well, not exactly. Ah, oh, with one of the national magazines. What is it? Time, life, look, huh? No, miss, I'm not in the newspaper game at all. Yes. I'm in college. Ah, uh, no paper, no sandwich. <laughs> you know, look, miss, you don't understand. You see, I only can... Out, to Mooch! I came here to find the dog. You found the beloved boo-boo? That I did. Come this way. You look pretty sneaky to me, especially around that cowardly chin. Leave my cowardly chin out of this. I came here to return a lost dog, not to be insulted. I'm leaving. Oh, no, look, kid, look I was it. only Nothing kidding. Nothing in the world's I worth was... getting insulted for. Nothing, do you? I just saw something that's worth getting insulted for. Hi. Did I hear some dear sweet doll say he found my dear sweet boo-boo? Yeah, uh, you are within snuggling distance of the dear sweet doll who found your dear sweet boo-boo, my dear sweet Miss Van Loon. You boy? Me boy, you girl, I've noticed. His <laughs> name is uh, Dopey Somebody. Yeah, that's Dopey Somebody with a B. Oh, how can I ever thank you, Mr. Somebody? Yeah, uh, that's Mr. Gillis, and don't worry your pretty head about how to thank me, ma'am. I'll think of something. Yes, <laughs> I will. <laughs> now, I do hope you won't think I'm the suspicious type. Would you mind telling me which of these dogs is boo-boo, Mr. Gillis? Yeah. Uh, this one, Miss Van Loon, and you may call me Dobie. That's my boo-boo, and you may call me Valentine. Valentine Van Loon has kissed me. Take me, I'm ready to go. I've had the best life Mr. has Gillis? to offer. There's Where nothing... is my boo-boo? Oh, oh, oh boo-boo, yeah. Uh -huh. When I see him, I'll be eternally and overwhelmingly grateful to you. Uh-huh, yeah. Well, if the traffic lights are with me, I'll be back in time for three or four hours of eternal, overwhelming gratitude before dinner. Get, get out! You have just given me a great idea. Eternal, overwhelming gratitude. Ah, ah, you get it, kid? We have a chance for a million bucks worth of free publicity. This fine, upstanding, blank-looking boy returns your dog, see? He takes one look at you and boom! Boom? Boom! He falls in love with you! Boom! You fall in love with him! Boom! You fall in love with each other! Boom! It's the love affair of the century! Boom! Just a minute. Just a darn minute. If you think I'm gonna sit still for a mess of silly, embarrassing publicity and pretend I'm in love with Valentine and hold her hand and kiss her and snuggle with her... You're 100% correct. When do we start? Now you're talking, kid, huh? Boom, we play it up big. Boom, we hit every paper in the country. Boom, we turn you kids into America's sweethearts. What do you say, Valentine, sweetie? I think it's a gorgeous, romantic, shaggy dog story. I like it, I like it. How about you, Dobie, dear? Yeah, what about you, kid, huh? You want to go through with it? Yeah, will I go through with it? Does this answer your question? Kiss me. Ah, oh, please, kid, I don't have any time for that now. <laughs> Not you, her! You're gonna line up five o'clock on coast-to-coast -coast television. Oh, this is gonna be the hottest love affair to hit the ass and throw me over. 
What was that chick's name again? <laughs> Look, kid, clear out of here. I gotta line up a television crew. Right. And be back here at 4.30 sharp. Right, right. With my dear sweet boo-boo. Right, right. Wow. Wrong, wrong, no. I ain't letting you go no place with my dear sweet doggy. Now, I'll admit I've double-crossed you on account of girls on rare occasions. Oh, rare occasions. 137 times is rare occasions. Come on, Bowser, let's cut out. Hey, Maynard, hold it. Uh, supposing I was cooking up a mean, evil scheme, which I do not for one minute concede, what would that scheme be? Think, just think. Think? Me? Not my line of work. Come on, friend of man. The best. Hey, Maynard, wait. No, Maynard, listen to me. What low scheme could I be scheming? To turn this fine dog into a cruel scientist for laboratory experiments? The answer springs immediately to your lips. You say no. I do? Or am I scheming to turn him over to a cruel Eskimo to pull a heavy sled through mountainous snows? Again, you say no. I do? Of course, there's no snow here. I gotta give you that. So you see, there is no mean, evil scheme I could be cooking up. True? True. All the possible dirty tricks I could have tricked you with have been eliminated. True? True. So therefore you trust me. True? False. Come on, Curly. Say goodbye to Rat Fink Doby. <laughs> it's a girl that owns a dog. Okay, I admit it. But how could I be interested in her? She's only six years old. Oh? A little six-year-old girl is so grateful to you for finding her lost dog that she's already started thinking of you as Uncle Maynard. Me? Uncle Maynard? And I ain't even married. Sometimes Unky Maynard. Unky Maynard, I'm not even engaged. Sometimes Unky Wonky Maynard. Unky Wonky Maynard, and I don't even go with girls. Glory Oski, what a sweet little niece of Stork brought me. Oh, boy, I'm getting all misty. You know, I'll get misty on your own time, Maynard. Right now, I want you to get the dog out of here so Dad won't come back and find him. Boy, if he knew I had that dog, he'd figure out some sneaky, crooked way to get his hands on the re... Uh, the re... Uh, what, though? Uh, the uh, re-nothing, Maynard. Just take the dog to your house, and I'll pick him up later and take him to that uh, little girl. Why can't he stay here? Yeah, well, Dad doesn't like dogs in the store. I don't blame him. They're not great customers. No. no. <laughs> It's Dad. Take it easy, Dobby. Get used to him. It takes time, like 30, 40 years. Yeah, man, quick. Hide the dog. Huh? Oh. How's this, Dobby? No, man. <laughs> Smoking, Mr. G. <laughs> Maynard, quiet. And pooch, out. Out, 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 out. Man, my feet are killing me. I've been tramping all over town trying to find that stupid. Dad, why don't you go upstairs and rest? Boy, what a day I've had. Twice I got bit, once I got chased by a family of unfriendly cats, and three times the cops picked me up for prowling. But. I gotta keep going. I just came back to get some hot dogs to kind of resume the hunt. I gotta find that. What was that? What was what? That. Oh, that, that. Uh, I've gotta watch those cucumbers. <laughs> oh. Hey, we better see if they got something on the two o'clock news about that dog. Somebody might have found him. Dog? What dog? Uh, what about a dog? What's the matter, Maynard? Don't you know nothing? Even less. <laughs> well, you see, there was this moving picture actress, and she hey, lost... Dad, did you hear Mom calling? What, from her sister's house in Cincinnati? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. What was that about finding a dog, Mr. G? Maynard, please don't interrupt. Dad and I are talking. You're talking. I'm trying to listen. I want to see and hear the news. Dad. Son. Dad. Son. Dad. Son. If you touch that switch just once more, you're gonna wind up with a very peculiar-looking fistful of knuckles. Do I make my point? You make it, you make it. There it goes again. Not only cucumbers, also radishes. <laughs> I sure would like to know about that dog stuff. Maynard, can't you see Dad's tired? Yes, Dad, what you need is a good night's sleep. Now, you go upstairs and go to bed, and I'll close up the store. Go to bed and close up the store? It's only 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You're getting to be more like your mother's side of the family every now day. Now, a special bulletin. Valentine Van Loon, the famous film star, has just announced that... Uh, Dad, uh, what do we care about some dumb old movie actress? What I want to know is what's new with you? What's new with me is that I am going to drive you into the ground like a tent peg if you don't cut out this foolishness and... Oh, my God. 
This may seem a daring statement to make, but offhand, I would say that there's something just a little fishy going on around here. Fishy? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Oh, I would. Yeah, well, either that little dog there is a ventriloquist, or there's another dog underneath the carton. Oh, no, what dog? What carton? Mm, stand aside, boy, on pain of instant mayhem. <laughs> Oh, excuse me for not introducing you, Mr. G, but he ain't told me his name yet. I just met him a short distance ago. He belongs to my little six-year-old niece. Sometimes she calls me Uncle Maynard. You can keep talking, Uncle Maynard. Well, my good buddy Dove, who's so large-hearted, he's gonna take him back to my little niece for me. And sometimes she calls me Unky Wonky Maynard. Ain't that friendly? Oh, you bet it is, Maynard. And remember, when it comes to being friendly, I am just as. Come, Maynard, stuff your beard with all the candy bars you want, and I will take care of Boo Boo. <laughs> oh, I will chocolate myself into sugar shock. <laughs> <laughs> Stupo don't know who the dog is, huh? I uh, must have forgotten to tell him the uh, omission is, uh, shall we say, rather amusing? Mm, shall we say rather sneaky? We, we shall, shall say, say rather, rather sneaky. sneaky. I know a sneaky trick when I see one. Who taught you all you know about him, hmm? You, Dad. And don't you forget it. So you con Maynard out of the dog, and you were going to take him down and return him to this Valentine Van Loon and collect all that overwhelming gratitude, true? Uh, yes, but I'm doing it for Maynard's own good. All that overwhelming gratitude it overwhelming. You know how Maynard feels about girls. It'd make him nervous. Mm -hmm. I know how you feel about girls. Yes, yes. And then you were going to do Maynard another big favor and collect the $500 reward, huh? Knowing that all that money would make poor little Maynard nervous. <laughs> True? It's false. I won't even accept the $500. Not accept the $500? That proves it. You're not a Gillis. I'm gonna sue that hospital. The day you was born, they give me the wrong kid. The only reward I want is one smile from Valentine's bee-stung lips. One twink from her twinkly eye. And then what's the problem? You take the bee-stung lips and the twinkling eyes, and I'll take the $500. It's a deal? A deal? For money? Absolutely not. A sensitive girl like Valentine would despise money grubbers. No offense, Dad. So the reward's out. I'm sorry you said that, boy. You mean... That's exactly what I mean. From here on in, it's every man for himself. Unky Wonky Maynard, your troubles are over. I'm going to take the dog back to your little niece for you. Now, ain't that friendly? Oh, very friendly, Mr. G. Consider your mean and crabby, but Dobe said it. Forget what Dobe said. I'm handling this, and from here on in, may the better contestant emerge victorious. Dad, you'll <laughs> ruin my romance. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> no, Dad, I know you're my father, and you walk the floor with me when I was a baby, and you paid for the braces on my teeth and all like that. But love is thicker than blood or dental bills, and I'm not going to let you wreck my life. Forgive me, but I have no choice. So Dad can't get him. Oh, oh. Man, I can't hold him much longer. Go. Hey, Dope, don't keep him in there too long or instant frozen grocer. Man, I go already. <laughs> on the hunted this big dog the hunters my father herbert t gillis and his son dobie gillis we used to be good pals just look at this picture but now alas we are bitter enemies and why for two reasons the first is petty and unimportant and unworthy it's money 500 bucks worth of gorgeous delicious green money <laughs> now look at the other reason reason number two sensible and intelligent and worthwhile Toby Dumpling, when you bring my boo-boo back to me, I'll be eternally and overwhelmingly grateful to you. Now there's a reason, a logical, legitimate, worthwhile reason. 
Meanwhile, back at the park, that big, desperate, big game hunter, Herbert T. Gillis, was closing in on his victim. <laughs> You ain't in the mood, huh? Well, to tell you the truth, I ain't in tip-top shape myself. I mean, I know I can let Dope take it back to my little niece, but my heart just ain't in it, and neither are my tonsils. See, I'm sure gonna miss you, good buddy. I'll be all lonely again with nobody to talk to except people. So, like, hail and farewell, dear friend, and let me hear from you once in a while, even if it's only a postcard. <laughs> Get lost, Fido. You get out of here. Listen, I'll tear up all your laughs and pictures. Cut it off, will you cut it? No, here you are. Yeah. Yes. Dog's got to get up pretty early in the morning to fool Herbert T. Gillis. to get that dog here at 5 o'clock, and I'm worried. Well, why? Isn't he reliable? Well, he's reliable. He just doesn't tell time too good. Well, there's only three minutes till airtime. We have got to move. Charlie, Charlie, is there a kid in the hall with a dog, a kid named Maynard? Hey, yeah, wait. I did see a kid with a, with a beard, and he had a dog with him. They were down by Miss Van Loon's room talking to her. Oh, yeah, that really is A-OK and ready to go. Now, listen, fellas, I want you to get this straight. Now, when Valentine comes out, I want you to come in very close on her. And then I want you to pan over when she goes to kiss this schnook dopey, you hey, see? Hey, that's then... be, uh, with a B. Oh, never mind the dull details. Now we're on the air in 20 seconds. Valentine, Valentine, sweetie, are you ready? Speed, wait, something dingy is just happening. I just say that it is H hour minus two. All right, now, everybody, stand by, stand yeah, by. where's the dog? Where's Boo Boo? Oh, Valentine must have her. She was in the hall with your bearded friend. <laughs> Hello, America. We interrupt the broadcast of the summit meeting in Geneva to bring you a program of real importance. Here she is, that red-hot star of screen, television, and bossa nova parties, your number one teenager, Valentine Van Loon! My hero, I love you madly. My beloved, I love you likewise. Sweetheart, this is just for you. Oh. Mmm, delicious tutti frutti. No, not that. This. Hmm? Hey, she's trying to kiss me like help, like FBI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Miss Van Loon, there's some mistake. You bet there's you big phony. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Van Loon, this is the love affair of the year. He's just a publicity grabber. He didn't find my boo boo. You're darn tootin' he didn't. I found him, and here he is. Five hundred beautiful bucks worth of pooch, so start counting, sister. What are you, some kind of a nut? That's not boo boo. Oh, yeah? Well, your name ought to be boo boo because you are making the biggest one of all time. Miss Van Looney, tell this, 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 that this is your boo boo. But it isn't. This sweet boy is at a returned boo boo. Yes, I am quite cute. There's my dear sweet boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, just a darn minute. That can't be Boo Boo. He's too short. Your description said the Boo Boo was three feet tall. Well, he is three feet tall when he stands on his little hind legs. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the reward, you wonderful man. Remember, no kissing. No, this reward. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 40, 60, 80. <laughs> Well, I've lost. <laughs> You've lost her. Look what I'm losing. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> hey, Mr. G, how much do you want for that dog there? Mm, I don't know. At this point, I got quite a bit of dough invested in him. A new collar, flea powder, food, I'd say about 50 bucks. I'll give you 38 cents I'll cash. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been meaning to ask you, how'd you know that little dog was Boo Boo? He told me, and dog, he speaks it practically, practically perfect. perfect. I know, I know. Maynard, do you really believe dogs talk to you? Oh, sure, Dope. They talk to anybody. All you gotta do is listen. <laughs> oh, he did? No. Really? <gasps> no kidding, Glorioski. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.